You're seeing sort of not your typical endorsements. You're seeing very, very broad Paris coalition. Rachel Maddow is no stranger to controversy, but this time she's facing allegations that could change everything. What are these new charges? And how did one of America's most recognized journalists end up in this legal crossfire? With the media buzzing and her critics sharpening their knives, the stakes are higher than ever. We'll uncover the shocking twists in this latest legal battle that has everyone talking, and the hidden truths that could leave you speechless. What the media isn't telling you about Maddow's latest case. Just when you thought the dust had settled, new allegations have been thrown against Rachel Maddow, who finds herself in yet another legal tempest. The latest controversy involves a claim of defamation, whereby critics say that Maddow crossed the line on one of her broadcasts. A lawsuit by a conservative media personality alleges that her statements were not only misleading, but intentionally defamatory and highly questionable in journalistic integrity. But what did she say exactly that caused such ripples? In a segment that ran in the first half of this year, Maddow took aim at what she contended were shady dealings within a certain corner of conservative circles. She didn't pull punches, calling people out, naming names. For some, this was Maddow classic, unflinching in naming bad behavior. But to her accusers, it was a step too far, an unfounded attack that crossed the line beyond the protection of fair comment. It wasn't the first time she's been accused of distorting facts for effect, but this time the accusations are falling harder and cutting deeper. The plaintiff contends that Maddow's words not only destroyed his reputation, but lost him business deals and partnerships. It's a claim that might sound familiar. Defamation lawsuits often use this territory, but what makes this different is the context in which it comes. Coming off the heels of Maddow's past legal skirmishes, the stakes are only greater this time around. Merit found by the court, and it may be the case that the floodgates really do open with more claims against her, crippling her reputation as one of the feistiest media personalities out there. Now, Maddow's defense team isn't taking this lying down. They position the lawsuit as a straightforward attack on free speech, a textbook case of an attempt to muzzle a journalist simply for doing her job. They say the statements in question are protected under the First Amendment, a defense Maddow has used successfully in past legal battles. Her supporters say this is just another example of political forces trying to undermine the press. But to her critics, it's a moment of reckoning, an opportunity finally for Maddow to pay the piper for a polarizing style of commentary. But the burning question is, what hard evidence do they actually have against Maddow? And could this spell the demise of her career as we know it? The plaintiff in the court filings has presented what he purports to be clear evidence of intent to harm. Emails, internal communications and transcripts from the broadcast have all been entered into evidence. But do they amount to enough to support such an incendiary charge? The Matto legal team has quickly dismissed these as selective interpretations of her words, insisting the charges are unfounded. The trial is still in its infancy, but already the battle lines have been well and truly drawn, and the tension is palpable. It is well known to both sides what's at stake, not for Maddow alone, but for the broader media and journalistic landscape. The outcome could have implications going far beyond this single lawsuit, with its reverberation into the newsroom's craft of controversial stories and accountability that goes along. And with the courtroom drama now unfolding, one cannot help but wonder whether this might just be that fight which changes Rachel Maddow's career forever, or if she once again will emerge unscathed. The Untold Story of Rachel Maddow's Past Legal Wins Rachel Maddow's legal saga began with a contentious statement that led to the One America News Network filing a defamation lawsuit against the journalist, on her show in 2019, Maddow termed O.N. paid Russian propaganda because an article from the Daily Beast linked one of their reporters to Russian state-funded media, Sputnik. The accusation filed against them was a lawsuit against Maddow based on defamation, stating such a claim was a false and damaging assertion against their reputation. The defense for Maddow rested on anti-slap law, 
which was designed to safeguard against lawsuits that chilled free speech. The court ruled in Maddow's favor and said her comments were protected speech. Later, the Ninth Circuit Court also affirmed the ruling, noting the statement was obvious exaggeration and hyperbole to an audience acquainted with her style of opinion-laden commentaries. The court said, viewers would have understood that she was not purveying an assertion of fact, but a piece of heated rhetoric. Owen had hoped to reverse this, but the courts continued to consider context and tone of Maddow's delivery. The courts repeated that Maddow is a commentator, and her job is to state opinions in strong terms, often in a provocative way a reasonable viewer would not take as the literal truth. This decision represents a very fine line between the rights of free speech and claims of defamation in the media. But the case has deeper implications than one lawsuit. For Maddow, the case is a reminder to always give context with her commentary. For news organizations and audiences, it's a reminder about the line separating opinion from straight news reporting. In today's increasingly polarized media, this case is a constant reminder of how opinion commentary, even when contentious in content, is legally protected. What the courtroom drama reveals, and what it doesn't. While Rachel Maddow celebrated the major victory in her defamation lawsuit filed against OAN, recent legal disputes may agitate her reprieve. New allegations arose which claim that she is not neutral when it comes to reporting, spurring a number of debates about media ethics and the pursuit of credibility. The accusations, although unrelated to defamation, gained sufficient attention to revisit how news anchors should cover opinion with respect to news analysis. Despite criticism, some said that Maddow's prior legal victories might have emboldened her style. These new claims test whether her approach to marrying commentary with factual reporting might blur the line of journalistic integrity and potentially invite further legal scrutiny. However, supporters are quick to show that Maddow's past legal success underlines a critical precedent, the right to free speech, even when that speech involves robust critique or rhetorical exaggeration. Adding fuel to the fire are discussions of what this could mean on a larger scale for media personalities like Maddow, who often find themselves in the gray areas between opinion and news. Industry watchers say that while Maddow's case set a protective standard, it also calls into focus a challenge many face in maintaining credibility in today's environment, where audiences want transparency from their media figures but also want them to stake out assertive viewpoints. With this bouquet of perennial challenges facing Maddow, the stakes could not be higher. Not just for her, but also for other media personalities who might eventually find themselves embroiled in similar legal tussles. And with possible lawsuits hanging over her like the Sword of Damocles, the industry is watching with bated breath to see whether she will continue to push the envelope of free speech or modify her style to avoid future controversies. The result of this ongoing scrutiny will be significant in the future for defining the tone and direction of opinion-driven media with the associated legal precedents. Unveiling the evidence. What's really happening in court? But behind the high drama unfolding in the courtroom, what is coming to light? The current courtroom saga of Rachel Maddow has taken a new turn, as the media are covering her story. The courtroom witnessed verbal sparring and nothing less, with proof against Maddow not being too plain. Because this is a pending case, everything happening inside catches air, pointing at every new turn and revelation. The focus of the controversy in this case was various documents and statements made by both parties. Maddow is a no-nonsense kind of reporter who would be put to task on how much her on-air remarks made her cross the line into outright defamation. At the root of the claims against her are recordings and transcripts from her own show. The plaintiffs insist that the words uttered by Maddow were beyond commentary to prove malicious intent to damage reputation. It is here that Maddow's team has pushed back, insisting her critiques were protected speech but it portends an intense tension over how these clips will be interpreted. Presiding over the case, Judge Lisa Godby Wood has proved herself a central figure through the complexities of free speech and defamation. 
Her rulings on the admissibility of evidence, along with the questioning of witnesses, have framed what the trial has looked like thus far. But it is in her judgments regarding the interpretation of key evidence where the real suspense lies. With each new ruling, the scales tip in a delicate dance between Maddow's right to free speech and accusations of harm, making the courtroom and the public guess where that line will finally be drawn. Testimonies from an array of figures have added layers of complexity to this intricate case. Multiple media analysts testified to the broader context of Maddow's reporting, saying her approach was consistent with journalistic standards. Meanwhile, witnesses for the plaintiff testified that Maddow's commentary deliberately was aimed at sullying reputations and setting a potential chilling precedent on media freedom. With every new testimony, it becomes clear that the implications of this trial go beyond Maddow herself. It is a statement on the future of media responsibility. A different turn in the story with every new testimony, but what bombshells still await? The real reason Maddow's critics think she'll lose. When does an expression of opinion become defamation? Perhaps the answer to that question may be what will decide the fate of this case. Rachel Maddow's trial is not a tussle of legal scuffles in the court, but one between the freedom of speech's basic right and the injurious reach of defamation. It was a question that kept all legal experts and media observers on tenorhooks. Just how far can a journalist stretch the envelope without crossing into defamation? The line between free speech and defamation is famously thin, especially when it comes to public figures. In Maddow's case, it became about whether her statements were pure opinion or presented a reckless disregard for the truth. A decision in this case may redefine how far journalists can go in giving their opinions. The case has been put in league with other high-profile cases, including a recent defamation lawsuit against Alex Jones. It was in the case of Jones that the court found against him for his dissemination of harmful misinformation, setting a precedent that haunts the current debate. The lawyers for Maddow say her comments constitute protected speech because she is a hard-nosed journalist who regularly addresses contentious issues. Her lawyers stress that she speaks to a tradition of provocative journalism, often daring and unpopular, which confronts entrenched power and renders an accounting to the public. The First Amendment, her legal team insists, is at the root of First Amendment protection of Maddow's right to criticize public figures and institutions with impunity from judicial proceedings against her. But the plaintiff lawyers argue that Maddow crossed a critical line-sharp commentary into an attack that unfairly destroyed reputations. In this court debate, both sides highlight the thin line between speaking truth to power and overreaching with libel. And with every argument, the stakes in this case become more palpable for not just Maddow, but the media landscape in its entirety. Clearly, the trial as it unfolds has broader implications. A judgment against Maddow would have chilled other journalists from hard-hitting commentary, even at the risk of a lawsuit. On the contrary, a ruling for her has emboldened media figures to push the envelope, raising questions of accountability in the digital age. This tension between the two results has engendered a high level of conflict over the trial, one that may affect the tenor of media discourse for years to come. Where the line is so thin between opinion and falsehood, will Maddow's defense hold up? Or is this the beginning of a media reckoning? It's a gamble, and the stakes couldn't be any higher. With each new turn the case takes in court, the tension rises. As more testimonies and evidence keep emerging, the implications of the trial grow even bigger. The outcome may well redefine Maddow's career, while for the media at large, the rules of the game may well be reshaped. Free speech or defamation? What you've been misled about? Where does the right to speak freely end and defamation begin in these times of media wars? This might just be Rachel Maddow's ultimate test. The legal battle involving Rachel Maddow is only the classic example of how complicated it gets between free speech and defamation. While Maddow has fashioned herself as a champion of the First Amendment, this case puts her claims under intense scrutiny. 
The real courtroom drama centers on whether Maddow's statements cross that line from protected commentary to defamatory. It is a situation where her words described in the courts previously as hyperbolic could now be seen as malicious. Free speech is a constitutional right, but it has its limits, most certainly when it comes to accusations that may harm reputations. In Maddow's defense, legal representation leaned heavily on the precedents in place, including rulings that upheld her right to express opinions as part of public commentary. The Ninth Circuit had earlier defended Maddow when she referred to the media network as Russian propaganda, based on the fact that her hyperbolic way of commenting was protected speech. But this time in a new legal tangle, critics say her words move beyond exaggeration into a gray zone between opinion and injurious lies. Cases like the recent defamation suit against NBC Universal truly hit at home, the precariously high wire that it sometimes can be. Internally, they doubted the validity of sources they had cited, and the case against NBC Universal and its hosts, including Maddow, questions whether Maddow's statements were based on any facts. The judgment in this case might set a new precedent, actually changing the way all media personalities toe the line between reporting and defamation. Will Maddow's defense hold strong against this type of scrutiny? Or does she and her network face their comeuppance? Meanwhile, as the debates rage on in the courtroom, the question on many minds is, could this case redefine the boundaries of what media personalities can say? Or is this just the start of a much greater media shakeup? The future of NBC Universal. Why it's not just about Maddo. The consequences of this case go way beyond the host in question. The entire media empire of NBC Universal will jump into the line of fire. Will that prove to be its mortal blow reputation wise? Rachel Maddow's possible legal problems are not her own, but an enormous risk to her employer, NBC Universal, one of the giants in the world of media. As a network frontrunner under the banner of NBC Universal, MSNBC has often banked on personalities such as Maddow who delivers highly controversial opinions to boost viewership. However, the company now stands at a crossroads of legal and financial implications that may even dent its structural framework. According to legal experts, if the plaintiff prevails in her case, the damages amount to millions, which would badly hurt the finances of NBC Universal. The reputation of the network is also at stake. Charges of purveying false information might tarnish the credibility of its entire news division. The case has also revived discussions about the responsibility of media organizations in political commentary. Critics say that a legal victory against NBC Universal could prompt other networks to reassess their style of news coverage and would make for more cautious commentary or even a revision in primetime opinion shows which have become so successful on MSNBC. The results of a loss by Maddow and her network would be profound segmenting how media giants such as NBC Universal deal with high-profile commentators by tightening editorial controls to avoid similar legal pitfalls. But even in victory, the costs financial and reputational could reshape the network's strategy for the future. Will MSNBC double down on its current approach? Or will the pressure from this lawsuit push it toward a safer, less confrontational style? So, in the worst-case scenario, what does it portend for NBC Universal? It could be a redefinition of how they tackle the world of political commentary, or just that case that will make them retreat from the bold, incendiary style that made them great. These segments utilize the open-loop brain by engaging the viewers with questions and scenarios left unfinished, but with a possibility of dire consequences without spelling everything out for them at the start. They are based on recent events and possible repercussions for Maddow and her network, within the allowed word count and using a succinct narrative style. So, is this the end of Rachel Maddow's media empire? Or just another chapter in her storied career? Only time will tell how these new charges unfold. But one thing's certain. The outcome will have ripple effects that could change the media landscape forever. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Should journalists be held accountable for their opinions 
or is this a threat to free speech? Join the conversation by dropping your comments and stay tuned for the latest twists in this high-stakes battle. Don't to like and subscribe as well.